Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, host of the Raiders Report. And coming up on today's show, we're going to get into the latest news and rumors that have happened over the last 24 hours around the silver and black. We're going to talk about the latest going on right now with the Raiders OC search. Had some interviews yesterday. I'll kind of fill you in on what I've heard around those discussions. We are going to also talk about Cliff Kingsbury and Luke Getze, the two people that interviewed. And there's been some updates that have happened today in the NFL world around at least one of those names. Then we're going to get into the latest around Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, and Caleb Williams. And how they have recently been linked to the Raiders just in the past 12, 14 hours. If you always find yourself looking for Raiders news and rumors, make sure you click that subscribe button. Make sure you got those notifications turned on. I pledge this, when the Raiders hire whoever they end up hiring at OC, I will be live. When the Raiders announce that officially, officially, that they are keeping Patrick Graham, I'm going to go live. At the end of the day, I like having those moments with the nation because we can just kind of enjoy it in that raw, instant Right there. You know what I'm talking about? So seriously, hit that subscribe button. All right, so yesterday what ended up going down was the Las Vegas Raiders. They interviewed Luke Getze, former Bears offensive coordinator, and they also interviewed Cliff Kingsbury for their open OC job. I put out on social media, at Mitchell Renz 365 hey man, like you cannot afford to let Cliff Kingsbury leave that interview room. Obviously the Raiders did. They decided to maybe not pull the trigger right away, but when you really think about it, the way that Mark Davis has kind of run this entire hiring interview process this entire season, you got to be able to give him credit because he really hasn't done too much to go react right away, right? Like they had Antonio Pearson, they brought him in for multiple interviews. Then when you think about their GM search, they took a long time to be able to figure out what exactly they wanted to do in that regard. So when you add all of those things up, I'm not too surprised that they didn't go out and hire somebody right away. So you have Cliff Kingsbury, you have Getze. What's kind of interesting around this whole idea is today, Getze is going to be interviewing with the New England Patriots. And as I am recording this video, New England, they just hired a brand new defensive coordinator in Demarcus Covington. So maybe they're trying to put a little bit of a staff together today. Could be something to keep in mind. I know that the Raiders have also Zach Robinson as an interview candidate. Like, I'll be real with y'all. I don't think Thad Lewis is going to end up getting the job. I wouldn't hire Luke Getze if I'm being real with you. Um, Sullivan wouldn't be somebody that I would bring in. But a name that I have talked very highly about, Zach Robinson and then Cliff Kingsbury. Those would be my top two choices for the silver and black. However, you know, Chugs and I, we were talking about it on the Raiders report on Thursday that as soon as Raheem Morris got the job in Atlanta, that it is expected that he's going to bring Zach Robinson. Remember, Morris was the D.C. for the Los Angeles Rams. Zach Robinson, fast game coordinator with Los Angeles. I'm I'm very confident that he's going to go be the new O.C. now over with Raheem Morris and the Atlanta Falcons. So that kind of leaves the Raiders here in an interesting spot. Like, to me, knowing that Robinson's going to go to Atlanta, I'm a big believer now that there's one candidate and one candidate only, and it's Cliff Kingsbury. At least that's the name that I would hire. However, I want to know what you guys have to say. Who do you think is going to be the Raiders OC? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. You're about to get hit with the YouTube ad break. I want you to scroll on down and let me know. My answer is Cliff. It's always been Cliff. And as soon as the reports came out from Coward, as soon as the reports came out from other sources like Albert Breer, it was all leading towards Cliff Kingsbury. And then he's the one that's got the final interview. Like, I am just a believer it's only a matter of time before the Las Vegas Raiders do end up hiring Kingsbury. If they decide to go another route, I will be disappointed. And if they do decide to go another route, like, I would go interview Clint Kubiak ASAP Rocky because Kubiak would be right up there in that tier with Robinson Cliff in terms of what I would want our next OC to potentially look like. All right, y'all, coming up next here on the show, we're going to get into some juicy rumors around some quarterbacks in the NFL draft. It was reported yesterday that Tom Telesco is eyeing up a few people, so we'll, we'll talk about a few quarterbacks here. Before I get into that, I got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Prize Picks. For anybody out there that plans on watching the NFC Championship game tomorrow, the AFC Championship game tomorrow, Chugs and I are going to be live. So, hey, tune in. We're going to have a hell of a time. But if you want to go 
get started. If you're a big fan of the NBA, Prize Picks is the number one daily fantasy sports app out there right now. You can get up to 25 times your money. I had a had a Raider fan send me their Prize Picks. It was twenty dollars to win like one thousand eight hundred, but the end of the day yeah you might not win every time but you know what you're gonna have a lot of fun because if you get down to the the very end of, and you're like man i need one rushing touchdown by lamar jackson i'm gonna make eighteen hundred dollars i mean that's electric right like that you can't have better money spent so if you want to go get started the link's going to be available to you all down in the comments and down in the description of today's show it's prizepicks.com slash clns just make sure that you use code clns for a first time deposit match up to a hundred dollars and if you can't find the link it's all good i'm putting it down there again down in the comments down in the description of today's show all right so coming up here is going to be some juicy rumors around some quarterbacks in the draft my guy graphic raider went on Twitter last night and he said per source, which I I chuckled because knowing Graf the way that I do, he's not a per source guy. Uh, He actually shows me a lot of the inside information that he gets and he doesn't report on it because he doesn't want to be that type of person that gets the inside info and then shares it because then uh, there's some sources that they won't send you any more information, right? So he goes per source, I can get used to this. Tom Telesco likes Bo Nix a lot. Not a big fan of J.J. McCarthy. Also sees Caleb Williams potentially forcing his way to Washington, which is his hometown at pick number two. Uh, That could potentially open up a bidding war for the number one pick. Things can get crazy here in a minute. Stay tuned. And he said, now let's let the hate flow in. And I I get where Graphic is saying all that stuff because probably my biggest pet peeve, minus people calling me uh, a Jets fan, right, just because you work for somebody to pay your way through college doesn't make you a fan of the team. Just because you live in uh, the city of Dallas where you recently worked doesn't make you a Cowboys fan, right? Like, you just live in that city. So I can understand Graf because nobody thinks that Graf has sources. Nobody thinks that anybody here on YouTube has sources. But I'll tell you this right now. Graf has shown me a lot of different stuff that has happened way before it's been put out there by the media. I mean, he showed me uh, that Telesco was going to get the job way way before the Raiders ever announced it so to me I'm actually going to take what Graf is saying here is it, it's the truth because he's got a really good source right now he's tied in with somebody that's connected with Telesco and as far as I'm concerned if they're telling if, if Graf is telling y'all that Telesco likes Bo Nix and he's not a big fan of J.J. McCarthy you should absolutely believe that so um, I, I'm telling you what Graf is very well tied in right now but I do think that Telesco could like a quarterback like Bo Nix. And, you know, jokingly, when the Raiders hired Telesco last week at this point, I said, man, that'd be wild if the Raiders drafted Bo Nix because of the success Justin Herbert has had. And, you know, sometimes quarterbacks they or GMs, coaches, they look at the helmet, they look at, all right, it's worked in the past. Could it work again? I, I, I do find it interesting. However, Bo Nix and uh, Justin Herbert are nowhere near the type of same quarterback. Nick's obviously had an incredible season this past year for the Ducks. Uh, 77.4% completion percentage, which is like bonkers type of good. 4,508 yards, 45 touchdowns, three interceptions, quarterback rating of 188.3, a QBR of 91.2. Like if you look at the numbers alone, Bo Nix, you're like, Mitch, how the hell is this guy not in the conversation to be the number one overall pick, Right. I do think, though, the more and more tape I watch on Knicks, the more I just get nervous that he's a check down Charlie type of QB. He's so afraid to make the aggressive throw. He always takes the simple throw. And there's going to be certain offensive schemes that he absolutely could be pretty good in. But to me, for the Raiders, if you're going to if you're going to draft Bo Nix at 13, it is going to be a little bit of a stretch. So to me, I, I, I don't think that it's smart for the Raiders to take Knicks at 13. If you wanted to trade back and potentially look at him at the end of round one, round two, still wouldn't love the idea. But what I do find interesting is that Telesco doesn't like J.J. McCarthy. That makes me very happy because, to me, I would rather the Raiders draft Bo Nix than J.J. McCarthy every single day of the week. And if I'm in the AFC West, why the hell would you draft McCarthy with Jim Harbaugh going to the Los Angeles Chargers like if there's one guy that knows McCarthy like the back of his hand it's the guy right now that's coaching the Chargers so I would stay away from him I also find it interesting the the rumor around Caleb Williams because it's been very well documented that Williams might want to play for certain teams I know like those rumors recently have been kind of squashed but then again there was a report that came out I'm gonna say what earlier in the week that was talking 
Like, the reason why Telesco got the job is because of the plan he put together at quarterback. And if that's the truth and the Bears want to, let's say, draft Caleb Williams, they don't want to draft Jaden Daniels, they don't want to draft uh, you know, Drake May, and now they're like, oh, shit, well, if Caleb doesn't want to play for us, he wants to go to Washington, well, then what? Well, then what? The Raiders could trade up to number one. Maybe Chicago decides to hang on to Justin Fields. And the quarterback that I just – I get that gut feeling that if the Raiders trade up that they're going to take, it's going to be Jaden Daniels, right? Like, when you look at what the Raiders have, they have Marvin Lewis, Antonio Pierce, both of those guys very tied into Jaden. Gave him a shout-out during his Heisman Trophy ceremony. Was in the Week 18 locker room. And I know some people don't like to look at social media, but – I, I think social media can tell a lot of different pictures in today's day and age in the NFL. Like, Antonio Pierce follows Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels follows Antonio Pierce. Marvin Lewis follows Jaden Daniels. Those guys don't follow Caleb Williams, right? Like, I, I do think having that relationship and the way that this team has been able to get built, Jaden is a very intriguing option for the Las Vegas Raiders. But let's, let's, let's kind of go back to Bo Nix because I got into a little bit of a discussion on social media last night. Me saying that I don't view Bo Nix as a round one quarterback. I probably should have added I don't view Bo Nix as a round one quarterback for the Raiders. And that's also, I don't know who the OC is yet. And when you're in the same division as Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, I feel like taking a quarterback like Bo Nix is, is, is hitting a single. And let's face it, you need a home run. So here's my question to the nation. Would you want the Raiders to draft Bo Nix at 13? Let's just say, you know, you had the entire offseason. The offseason, you, you, you said no to all the quarterbacks in free agency. You said no to Justin Fields, like Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson. You all said no. You waited till draft day, and you thought that, all right, I might be able to trade up into the top three. Unfortunately, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, those are your top three picks. So now you're like, all right. What do I do? Do I take a quarterback at 13? So let's say like that's the scenario here. You're on the clock at pick number 13. Do you draft Bo Nix? Do you draft Michael Penix Jr.? Do you draft J.J. McCarthy? I want to know down below. My answer is no. I I am not going to take any quarterback at pick number 13. To me, it's not the smart option that the Raiders go with. Like Michael Penix Jr. is going to be a quarterback that I actually could see potentially falling down the draft boards because of recency bias. And it happens every single year. The last time that we saw him play was against Michigan, and he was probably the worst that we have seen him play against a defense that I would say is probably the closest defense he's seen to an NFL-caliber defense. On top of that, he's going to get red flagged for a lot of the injuries, and it is an extensive injury history, plus he's – you know, 23, 24 years old. Is that old? No, but there are a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL, like a Justin Fields, who's already played three years in the league, and he's, he's essentially the exact same age. So if I'm the Raiders, you know, that's something that's got to be thought about. On top of that, Penix is a lefty. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but you got to find somebody to protect your blind side. Are you going to have Colt Miller scoot over to the right tackle spot? I mean, Jermaine Illuminor, he's your free agent. Like, it just might be a little bit more of an expense that the Raiders don't want to necessarily go out and get. J.J. McCarthy should not even sniff round one. I don't care what any scout out there says. He does not deserve to be drafted in round one. And if a team does, it's going to scare the absolute hell out of me. Like when I watch McCarthy play, yes, he has a lot of experience. But one of the things that I look for, I'll call them NFL caliber throws when you watch tape. There's not a lot of NFL caliber throws that he has. And I'm not saying that they're the exact same player. But when I watch J.J. McCarthy I get the same feeling that I had with Trey Lance and I didn't love Trey Lance just because there wasn't enough tape on him. Like I couldn't evaluate the NFL caliber throws that Trey Lance was making at North Dakota state. And as you see, it just simply doesn't translate. And sometimes you're going to get them right. Sometimes you're going to get them wrong. But if you have a sample size of, let's say a thousand NFL caliber throws from a year or or a year, uh, a career, or you have somebody that's only got like, 50 NFL caliber throws like that's a smaller sample size that you have to evaluate and like Bo Nix this year I don't think that he has a lot of NFL caliber throws on top of that NFL caliber reads and the the nervous fan in me is saying you're going to draft a QB that I don't view like McCarthy's never going to be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL Bo Nix is never going to be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL Michael Penix Jr. I actually think could be a top 10 QB if he was able to stay healthy But when you're in a vision with Patrick Mahomes, when you see quarterbacks in the AFC like Joe Burrow, I get it, he's been injured, but like Lamar Jackson, 
a quarterback like Josh Allen. I just I, I don't understand how an organization can wrap their mind around taking the the single when, let's face it, you need a home run to take care of business against the Kansas City Chiefs. You do. You can't roll into next season with Aiden O'Connell. I love Aiden. I think he said all the right things this past week, saying like, "Hey, whoever the quarterback they bring in, they should be a com- they, like it should be a competition," which it 100% should be. And that's just why I love it. like Aiden is such a good dude, and he's somebody that you absolutely have to keep in this locker room. But like my personal opinion is, if the Raiders say yes, you know what, we are going to take a quarterback like Bo Nix at pick number 13. Well, then I believe that if that's the route that you're going to go, you better have somebody like Kirk Cousins. You better have somebody like Russell Wilson. To me, Baker Mayfield, he's going to go back to Tampa Bay. I do not want to sign Ryan Tannehill. But, like, going into that, if you're the Raiders, that means you're going to pay Russell Wilson. I'm hoping Wilson takes the friendly deal in 1.21. If you don't know why he would do that, go check out my video. It's already on the channel. And then, or you're going to pay Kirk Cousins, I'm going to say, $35 million at minimum per year. Sign him to a two-, three-year deal and let Bo Nix learn underneath Kirk Cousins. Because I'm telling you right now, if you put J.J. McCarthy on the field in the NFL, he's not even close to being ready. Bo Nix, not ready yet either. Michael Penix Jr., he might be ready, but I'm not going to trust drafting a quarterback like Penix with the unknown idea of what our offensive line is going to be. That scares the absolute hell out of me. So, like, I get that some people watch Oregon football. I I get that there's, you know, different – Types of QBs that can work in the NFL, right? Like Brock Purdy is winning games, but he's got a hell of a team around him. Like you can do it in right systems. I will admit, people think if the Raiders hire Cliff Kingsbury that Bo Nix would not be necessarily a good fit in that offense. I would be hesitant based off of what AP said because he wants to throw the football down the field. But Cliff Kingsbury also runs a lot of screens and uh, Bo Nix is a screen master. So I'll go more in depth on all of the quarterbacks as the draft gets closer and closer. Like I will do videos like literally just on strengths, weaknesses, scouting reports. I'm going to continue to watch more and more tape on all of these players. But if there's one thing that I feel like I've hit very well in my entire career, making podcasts for fantasy football to the point now with the Raiders, I, I feel like I've been very spot on with which quarterbacks are going to be good and which quarterbacks are, are not going to be good. Before I leave all y'all today, again, a reminder that I'm going to be live tomorrow for both the NFC and AFC Championship game. Chiefs-Ravens tomorrow is at 3 p.m. Eastern time, so we'll probably get started at like 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Then we're going to stay live throughout the entirety of then the Lions and Niners game on top of that. So if you're like, hey, man, I'm going to be hanging out on Sunday. You want to chill with Chugs and I? Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. And then, you know, one more thing before I go, because I know people that watch it to the end of these videos, y'all are y'all are some real ones out there. I was live today earlier with Hammer over at Hammer House on, uh, on YouTube. Go check him out. He's like 100 subs away from 8,000. I can remember when I hit 8,000 subs and, you know, you, you build and you try to get closer and closer. And to me, mine is hitting 100,000. Hitting 10K subs was probably the biggest, like, pat on my back of, like, all right, man, you're doing the right thing. So if you guys get a chance, you watch the show, you enjoy it, go give my guy Hammer uh, a subscribe. I think I think that's what the nation's all about. We're a family through and through. All right, y'all, I'm going to get ready. I got to get the heck out of here. I got to go take Chuck for a walk. I got a few other things that I have to do, make some phone calls in Las Vegas. Chugs and I will be out there on Media Row. We're going to get to meet and hang out with a bunch of players. Pretty excited about it. But enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, if the Raiders do end up hiring an OC today, I will be live here on the Raiders Report. For more videos around the Las Vegas Raiders, make sure you click the subscribe button right here. Content every single day. For even more videos around the silver and black, right there, that's your button. And then even more videos. If you're like, hey man, I need more from this guy, we pump out more content than anybody out there. We're getting close to 3,000 videos on this channel. So if you just look for updates every day, I promise we're the channel for you.